Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email us. Team also with the 1916 Company for all your purchase pricing and availability questions regarding this watch. Back in 2004, Jager LeCoultre did what few brands actually do. A car branded watch done right. And that's because the relationship was organic and long-standing. Through British Jager, Jager dashboard instruments had been used in Aston Martin cars dating back to the 1920s and continued to be used through the early 2000s, making this union less of a shotgun marriage and more a matter of the car branding appearing on the watch for the first time rather than the opposite. So this long-standing relationship was also consummated on the horological side by creating an all new model line, not slapping Aston Martin wings on an existing Jager LeCoultre product or products, but a line Amvox consisting of purpose-built from the ground up Aston Martin inspired models, of which this, the 2006 Amvox 2 chronograph, is my favorite and probably the most innovative. I would go so far as to say this is the most innovative chronograph of the 2000s, and that includes JLC's own Duomet. I will also go so far as to say that if Richard Meal made something mechanically similar to this, it would cost over $500,000, maybe a cool million. Now, there were several versions of the Amvox 2 out of the gate. There would later be others, the DBS and the similar Amvox 7, but initially there was a titanium Amvox 2, there was a blackened titanium Amvox 2, and then there was this, the hybrid titanium platinum model made in 200 pieces. It's distinctive for its limited edition and its platinum outer case, but also for its use of cool gray rather than black accents on the outer dial and the center disc. Now, although it's a 44 millimeter, I owned this watch and I have a small wrist and I loved the way it fit. So 44 in diameter, it measures 14 millimeters thick and then 49.5 from lug to lug with a quirky 23 millimeter spacing between the lugs as I measure them. On the wrist, I never had any problems with the fit of this watch. I would say it fits just fine on a 16 centimeter circumference wrist like mine. It even has a stepped bezel and a dramatically domed sapphire that helps the sleeve ramp up and over it. And I never had a problem with the lugs hanging over the edge of my wrist. If your wrist is my size or larger, neither will you. This is quite a bit weightier than mine as it has the platinum outer case and then a white gold folding clasp. So prior to 2006 at JLC, folding clasps were single fold. So if you had a platinum watch, you got a platinum clasp and it was a single fold. 2006 and later, which encompasses this watch's production, if you had a platinum watch, you now had double fold deployant, these smaller swing arms. JLC felt that they were stronger in white gold, which is not only mechanically stronger than platinum, but it is also mechanically the strongest of the golds. And it is a friction fit double deployant with a little curvature to match the curved underside of your wrist. The lugs are simple but strong. You can see this one's had a little bit of refinishing. Not catastrophic, but you can see it's been refinished at some point. So the squared off lug and then the soft bevel around the lug profile remain intact. This is a lovely watch that features strong lug profiles and an aesthetic that is loosely related to the 1960s Polaris diving alarm. So if you look at the case design, if you look at this dramatically boxed sapphire, if you look at the shape of the hands and then the font of the numerals used, you can see shades of the original Polaris. And we are talking the Polaris 68 version, not the 65 version. Uh, so this watch has a little bit of JLC design DNA, but more is drawn from the image of the clocks speedometers and tachometers fitted to the dashboard of Aston Martin cars under Jeger branding. So the watch is heavily automotive inspired and that starts with the crown, which is designed to look like a vintage gas cap. Then we have a dial that's designed to read like a speedometer. So not only do we have the sort of architecture of a speedometer, with radial arrayed numerals, and you can see the bottom is not calibrated right there. So just like the bottom of a speedometer would have a dead space where you'd have the odometer, so does this dial. But we also have a center disc with a very subtle set of Aston Martin wings on a granular base. On the wrist, it's not something you notice. The subtlety is much appreciated, and it's done well. We also have a little scale where you can easily read 
chronograph fractions, and I'm going to move these hands out of the way. The watch has two types of loom, one of which is easy to read and one of which is not easy to read. So can you tell the difference here? We've got spectacular loom for the discs and the hands, and then we have a black variant of Superluminova on the numerals that fades rather quickly and isn't super luminous. But what is cool is that this chronograph tells time, hours and minutes, using discs. And those discs are solid blocks of loom. Taking a look, we have uh, several different races here. The outer race, which is gray, featuring these cantilevered indices. We have an inner scale, which is dropped, and metallic satin. And it's designed to look like the concentric rings you'll find on a dashboard instrument. You can also see down at the bottom of the dial, they decided to show off by leaving some of the hammers of the chronograph mechanism visible. So you can see how we have this articulated case system that pivots on ball bearings and you can actually see the chronograph in action as I stop and reset the chronograph. And so it is on ball bearings. The case is articulated, and you can see it pivots in the center as these lugs are separate from the center case, and that's true on both sides. And the idea here was that Chagere LeCoult and Aston Martin were frequently at 24-hour races during the 10-year duration of the deal to create the Amvox watches. And if you're wearing racing gloves, you're not going to be able to screw down or screw off those little tight-shouldered crowns on something like Rolex Daytona. You're going to fat finger the operation using your gloved hand. And so clicking it to start, clicking it to stop, and clicking it to reset was easy to do even with gloved hands, and that was the idea. If you look in profile, there's a sliding lock. Put it in the center, and now everything's unlocked. Move it up to the top, and now the chronograph can run, but I can't reset it. I can't accidentally damage it by attempting to reset it. And then there's the bottom, or I should say this, this prevents me from attempting to stop or start it. And then there's the bottom, which locks everything. prevents me from locking and resetting. See this? I can still stop and start when I'm all the way at the bottom, but it prevents me from resetting. So this prevents stop and start. This locks out the reset. Taking a quick look, we do have hacking or stop seconds, though you will notice that when the watch doesn't have the chronograph running, there is no running seconds hand. So if you want, because it's a vertical clutch chrono, you can just leave it running full time. No additional hazard wear and tear to the watch. Also, because it is a vertical clutch system, you can see when you start it, there is no jump or stagger to the action. It doesn't leap the way a lateral clutch chrono would. And again, with the vertical clutch, you can just leave it running full time if you like to have center seconds. You don't want a still watch dial. Now, we also have, let's just make sure we're not in the date change danger zone here. So that's why we always check. We do have a quick set so you can rapidly cycle the date if you need to. And look at the attention to detail with the date disc, metallic, silvered, and brushed to match the inner dial. You can't see much on the back. Inside, we have a Jaeger LeCoultre Caliber 751. For those keeping score, this is the JLC Caliber 751E. Twin barrel automatic winding with unidirectional winding action and ceramic bearings for maximum efficiency. You got the 65 hour reserve. You have a nice flat torque plateau due to the twin barrels. Four hertz beat rate. We have a free sprung balance for shock resistance as well as precise regulation. You can see that the case is made of platinum and titanium. So the inner vessel, that's the part you could see on the flanks here, and here, that's titanium. And then the outer part, the primary case with the lugs, that is platinum. The movement is a JLC in-house automatic, and it was their first in-house automatic ever. So it was a landmark for the company as a whole. Master 1000 hours control, 
tested for over 41 days for chronometry, but also for durability, winding efficiency, water resistance, power reserve. The Master 1000 Hours Control goes beyond the COSC's bare movement test. It includes chronometry, but includes a lot more, and it's tested as a watch, which is the way you're going to wear it. You can see the 50 meters water resistant. It has a push down crown, so I recommend you not swim with it. And again, a column wheel vertical clutch chrono with lots to love. And if you love this watch, reach out to Team Also at the 1916company.com for purchase and pricing details of this landmark Chichère Lecoultre Amvox 2 Platinum Titanium Chronograph.